Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an ice cube simulation. So we're going to have these ice cubes actually falling into a glass and creating a splash. Now keep in mind that I'm going to show you the whole complete process. I'm not going to be skipping anything, but I will kind of gloss over the materials a little bit towards the end because that's not the main focus here. The main focus is making this really cool simulation. And because we're only making it um, 40 or 50 frames long, it's not going to be um, that much um, intense processing that your computer has to do. It's just kind of a fun little thing. I'm going to be uploading my original to Patreon, so all of that is in the description below. I worked hard on this one, so I really hope you guys enjoy it and are able to make something cool and refreshing. So let's jump in. So with a new scene open up in Blender, we're going to select all of the default objects. We're going to press X and we're going to go ahead and delete. We're then going to go Shift A, we're going to add in a circle. We're going to tap into edit mode and we're going to select the, um, so in our front view, we should like select the vertex to the very end. So in our front view to our left, you can see here this vertex and we're going to go control I or command I. It's going to inverse the selection. So now we're selecting every other vertex. We're I'm just gonna press delete and let's just delete verts. So now we only have this one single vertex off to the side. We're now gonna go E to extrude and Z, just extrude it up a little bit so you can see it. And let's go to our modifiers and let's give this a screw modifier. And now it's getting wrapped around like this. Okay, so now we have kind of like the base here. So let's just go into our front orthographic view. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually select this vertex here at the bottom and we're gonna go G X and just move it in a little bit like this. Let's select this vertex over here. Let's just kind of move it down. I want to go E to extrude and it's going to make the round bottom part of the glass like this. So we're just extruding in our front orthographic. Let's go E to extrude up and let's take it to about here. And let's just go E to extrude and E to extrude again. We're just making like a simple kind of glass like this. We're then going to select the vertex here at the bottom. We're going to go E to extrude. Let's extrude up a little bit and let's extrude in. And you might have to kind of go outside and go G, X, just so you can see, and just bring it close until it kind of touches. And you can enable merge here, so it'll kind of merge it together when it gets really close. So now we have that. But what we want to do is we want to select this vertex over here. Yes, you could use a solidify modifier for this, but I think it's better just to do it yourself. So we're going to select the top vertex. And we're going to go E to extrude a little bit, and then E to extrude down, E to extrude again. And then we're just following this profile. So E to extrude all the way to the bottom. And as it's coming down here, we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna make it a little bit thicker and then bulging up, just kind of the, a, like a real glass would do because of the molding process. And we're gonna go E to extrude and just bring it to the middle. And looking down in there, you should see that it's clipped. Uh, we do have merge enabled. And let's just go and give it a subdivision surface modifier as well. And uh, that's what we have now. Let's just go and apply the screw. Let's just bump the levels up on the subdiv and let's just go apply that as well. And now we have this nice glass that we can use. So first of all, let's get our ice cubes out of the way. So we're gonna tab back out, shift A, and it's the simplest thing. We're gonna add in a cube. We're gonna go G, Z, move it up. Tab into edit mode and let's just go control B with everything active. So control B, let's just give it a bevel, a roll the middle mouse button just to give it some extra segments like so, and then control R. You can see the loop tool here. Let's just roll in a few segments, double click. Control R hovering over here, roll in a few segments, double click. And then over here, control R, and let's do the same thing. Like that. Now we're gonna tab out. And let's just go to our modifiers. Let's just give it a displace. Let's just go over to our textures here, and let's just go new. Let's change it to cloud. And uh, let's just bring over at the modifier, let's just bring that strength way down. Something like that. Let's right click and go shade smooth. And uh, let's go and apply that. So now we have an ice cube, you can tab in and you can select everything if you want to, smooth it out a little bit with the smooth tool. Completely up to you, but we just want a little bit of randomness to our cube. We're then gonna tab into edit mode and just scale it down like so. It's important that if you scale anything in object mode that you go control A and apply the scale because our simulation is going to be looking at scale. So I'm going to have my cubes uh, about this big like that. So we're going to, um, let's just grab this, move it down. Uh, maybe just leave it here. And let's just grab our glass here. Let's go over to our physics properties. Let's give it a rigid body. We're going to make it passive so it doesn't fall. 
Now let's just make the under the collision, the shape, we're going to make that mesh. That's very important. Let's just select our cube here, our ice cube, and let's just get a rigid body as well. Let's just leave it at active and let's just leave it at convex hull. And let's just um, go to frame one and let's hit the space bar and let's see what happens. So you can see here it's falling nicely into our glass. So all we're going to do now is very simply go to frame one. Let's just rotate it a little bit like so. Uh, let's go shift D to duplicate, randomly rotate that one. You can do as many as you want. I'm going to go with maybe just one more over here like that and maybe rotate it a little bit differently. But you guys get the idea here. We just have these cubes and in frame one, we're going to hit the space bar. And now you can see they all kind of fall in on top of each other. So you guys can mess around with the size as much as you want. Make sure to apply the scale if you do. And then get something that you like. So I'm going to go with that. That looks really cool. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go to our end frame value here. I'm only going to make this at least 50 frames long. You can make it longer if you want, this animation. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our scene properties. I'm going to go over to rigid body world and let's go to the cache. And at this point, I'm just going to go and save this to my desktop, which I think I already have. So I'm just going to go ahead and save. Um, so we're going to come here to our end frame value and let's just make it 50 as well. So we don't have to unnecessarily bake. And let's go ahead and click bake. And it's just going to bake this simulation into our blend file. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see this is now baked in. That's really important. If we don't bake it in, it's not going to work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select our um, cup here. We're going to tab into edit mode and let's just select a loop or an edge down here, just a loop of edges. And we're going to go control plus just to grow the selection. And that's just going to give us like an inside selection. Now this is going to be the volume of the drink. So whatever amount you want, you can go control plus or control minus to go. I'm going to go about this much and go shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. And then I'm just going to go Alt S and just scale it in a tiny bit in the normals, just a tiny little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, go P and we're going to go separate by selection. So P and separate selection, tab back out. And now in object mode, this is its own object. We're going to tab in now and we're just going to go and select this edge here. I'm going to go E to extrude S to scale. And then we're going to go E to extrude S to scale. And let's just do it a few more times and then go F just to fill that face. Now we have our liquid part here. Okay, another thing is when we run this liquid simulation, because of how Blender's um, kind of limited fluid sim simulation stuff works, it's going to kind of penetrate through this thin glass. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the glass again. We're going to tab into edit mode. And uh, this time what we're going to do is, in fact, let's just, let's just go into object mode and just select these other objects and just press H to hide them. So select them and just press H to hide them temporarily. Then select the cup and let's just once again select the inside here and just go control plus to grow the selection and let's just make it all the way to the top like this. Let's just go shift D to duplicate, right click and then go P and let's just go selection, tab back out. So now this is its own object. I'm going to tab into edit mode, A to select everything and then E to extrude. Right click and go, and then we're going to go Alt S and just scale it out along the normals just a little bit, just to make it thicker. So this is going to be the actual object that it's interacting with, okay? Instead of the actual glass, and this gives us something thicker. So what we're going to do is we're going to tab back out, and of this object here, we're just going to, um, in fact, it seems like just tab into edit mode and just with it selected, let's just go grab the smooth tool and just smooth it a little bit, just to kind of fix some of these normal issues here. And if you do have overlap. You can always just select an edge and go X and just dissolve edges. So I might just do that here, just to smooth it out a bit. That's all we need, just like a kind of a barrier. We're gonna tab back out. And let's just, for now, go over to our object properties. Let's go to viewport display and let's make it display as. And let's make it wire. And we also can go up to visibility and turn it off for the render. We don't need to see it in the render. This is simply just a reaction surface or an effector for our liquids. So let's just go Alt H to bring the other stuff back. And what we're going to do now is I think we have everything in place. So let's now select our um, effector here. Let's just go over to our physics. Let's give it a fluid and let's just um, go down here to its fluid now underneath the rigid body and let's just make it effector. 
In fact, for this one here, we can actually um, just get rid of the rigid body here. So just get rid of the rigid body um, for this thing here. We just need the fluid and it needs to be set to affect her. And let's just go over to frame one and let's just select these ice cubes and we're gonna give all of them a fluid and we're gonna also make it an effector. So this one here, fluid, make it an effector. And then this one here as well, fluid and make the type an effector. And then what we need to do, and this is the fun part, is we need to select our, um, and then with this fluid selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press F3 and we're gonna type in quick I want to go to quick liquid. Okay, and now it's put everything in place for here. So on frame one, we're going to select this domain that it's created. We're going to tap into edit mode and just move it up. And everything's going to happen inside of this domain. And if you have to, make sure it goes above the ice cubes here. So this just needs to enc encase everything that's going to be our simulation like this. Don't make it too big. Don't make it too small. We're going to tab back out. Now we have a domain. So if we actually go into wireframe and we go to frame one and we hit the spacebar, we can already see our simulation. Now keep in mind, because of the low, the really low um, resolution of the simulation here, um, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna, it's gonna look a lot more viscous. But if we actually come over here to um, the resolution and we change this value here to 64, so we're doubling it, and we press enter. You can see that the resolution on this has gone up a lot now. So if we actually go to frame one, make sure to save, and we hit the space bar, we're now gonna see that when it falls in here, um, that is, there's a lot more, lot less viscosity. Now we're gonna turn this up even more, but for now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna do a few things. We're gonna come down to where it says mesh, we're gonna enable mesh. And that way, um, if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can actually see the mesh here as well. So now you can see it's actually falling to our liquid here. And it's only 50 frames, so in this case it's gonna go quite quick. So let's just let it finish. So you can see now we have this liquid sim, but it's still looking very viscous. And the thing is, the more you turn up, like I said, the more you turn up this um, resolution here, that is gonna look better. So we're actually gonna double that number still. We're gonna go 128. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our cache. Let's just make that 50 as well under the cache. I'm gonna select a folder here. I'm gonna to go to my desktop. I'm just gonna create a folder on my desktop. I'm just gonna go new folder. I'm gonna call it um, sim output. And I'm just gonna click on that and go accept. And now I have an output. Uh, I have 50 frames here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to the type here. We're gonna make it all. We're gonna make sure to save. And then we're gonna come here and we're gonna go bake all. It's gonna bake this simulation, but it's gonna be baking it at 128, so much higher resolution. You could go even higher if you want, but that's gonna be uh, very processor intensive. So let's let this finish, and then I'll show you what we have. Okay, so now my computer is huffing and puffing, but the simulation is done. So let's go to frame one, let's hit the space bar, and you can now see um, there's a lot more sloshing going on. Now, if you actually put the cubes at a higher height, um, they'll hit the hot water even harder and make more of a splash. But you guys kind of see this is a legitimate ice cube simulation. So for now, what we're going to do, we're going to select this um, outer bit, this um, thing. We don't need it anymore. So we're just going to press M. We're going to go New Collection and just call it Junk and go OK. We might still want it in the future. So we're just going to go here to this Junk. Let's just turn it off so it's not visible and turn off the render. So anything in there we won't see. It's just kind of out of mind, out of sight, and it won't render either. That's the Junk file here. Um, let's just grab our water here. So the, the thing that we turned into our water simulation. So if you select it there, um, this thing in here, not the actual water simulation. We're going to take that thing. We're going to press M and move it to the junk as well. So all we have here are our nice little ice cubes, our glass, and our simulation here like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to save. We're going to make sure we have our first active collection here. I'm gonna go Shift A, let's add in a plane. Let's scale that plane up. And let's go Control A and apply to scale. And you can add in a camera by going Shift A, add in a camera. Position your camera however you want. Now I'm not gonna show you how, just figure it out however you wanna do it. I'm gonna place mine here. I'm gonna go with a focal length of 120 under the camera settings. And I'm gonna have it look from above, like this. You can do whatever you want, okay? I'm gonna go over to uh, render engine. Let's make it cycles. Let's make it GPU compute. 
And uh, I'm gonna go Control B and just drag over my camera to limit it to the render. Like I said, this is not really about the materials. I'm gonna go into the same detail I did with mine. This is more just teaching you guys the simulation, but what we can do, you can go over to your world and um, properties here. Let's go to the color. I'm gonna add a HDRI texture. You don't have to. I'm gonna go open and I have some personal ones on my computer. I'm just gonna grab one of them, um, whichever one I think will work. Um, but you guys can choose whatever you want them. You can go to HDRI Haven and then I'm gonna go shift A. I'm gonna go add in an area light, move it up. And with this area light, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the strength of 200. I'm gonna increase the size. I'm gonna rotate it a bit. Uh, you guys can add whatever lighting you want. Get a nice setup. I'm just doing something really simple here. So let's have a look at that. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna select the ground here. I'm just gonna go give it a material. Let's make it kind of like a darker kind of color. Let's just bring up down to roughness to make it nice and reflective. Let's select the glass. Let's just go new. And it's a principle, so let's go down and take the transmission. Let's take that to one. Let's take the roughness all the way down to zero. So it's kind of more glassy. So you can see now we have glass and uh, by default, this um, simulation here has been given a material. So all we have to do is here come to the color and then make it something. So I'm gonna make it kind of like a whiskey kind of brandy color. You can do whatever you want. I think that looks kind of cool. And uh, there we have it. So the thing is with this glass material, it's looking kind of really weird. So let's just go over to our shading. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this principled, I'm gonna go shift A search and get a mix shader, place it over here. And let's just grab this shader over here and just drag it. Let's get a transparent. And let's see what kind of like the mix between those two look like. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So now we have kind of like this glass and let's just grab our um, cubes here and just selecting them all, holding and shift, select the glass and go control L and just uh, link those materials for now. So they kind of have the same material. So now we have ice cubes and let's just let them fall. Okay, that looks good. Let's go over to our render settings. Let's just enable our motion blur. And what we're gonna do now is just save and let's just give this a quick test render to see what it looks like. And here we have it. Now because of the lighting angle and uh, the kind of like the basic materials, it's looking a little bit funny here. Um, but it, you'll find if you mess around with your camera angle and your lighting, obviously you're gonna get um, different results. So kind of experiments, so you can see over here I rotated it, already looks a lot better. Add some textures, whatever you want, but I'm gonna quickly show you guys my original. And it's the exact same thing I just showed you. The only difference is I added some textures and I just worked a little bit more on my materials. I added some scratches, but what you're looking at here is the exact same thing. So I haven't ripped you guys off. What you see here is what you get. I have shown you the whole process of making this simulation, which was the main idea here. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna be uploading my original here, as you can see, to my Patreon.